for a while with uh, with meditation, I thought that um, excitement and calm uh, can be two different things, or are two different things. But I think um, I've discovered recently that they really do um, overlap. Sometimes calm is exciting. Sometimes it's um, just very relaxed. Um, uh, a teacher yesterday told me that samatha means can mean joyful calm. So I suppose that's the best way to describe it. That it's um, that's what you're sort of getting to. But sometimes it can be more one thing, more another. Mm. But it can definitely be exciting. I think as someone who wanted to, who is yeah enjoys that kind of sensation and thought that meditation to be interesting would need to have some kind of that feeling I've um I really do find it in Samata yeah and yeah now you're on a meditation week at our, our meditation center and we're stri- trying to establish mindfulness Mm-hmm. How easy do you find it, and, and what do you find? What is your experience of coming on a meditation week here? Um, yeah, I think uh, it's it, it's certainly easier to find mindfulness here than out in normal life because it's the most beautiful place you can imagine. Um, it's green and it has lovely orchards and um, lots of foliage the weather always seems like nice or interesting so I guess it's easier to be mindful because you're always looking out at what's going on um, and because you're with other people who um, you can tell sometimes they're trying to be mindful so you mm. get that sort of group sensation a bit um, but it's definitely something that takes a lot of practice um, I mean I've been meditating for years now but I think this week I again, as so many times, felt some kind of sense of revelation of like, oh right, I'm not being very mindful at all, I'm not very mindful, and then um, becoming more mindful, and um, yeah, I feel it's something that you, you start to feel at home with after a while, and the trick is to not not push it and not feel too um, uh, forced into it, you know, take it at your own pace, you don't have to constantly be mindful, but after a while it becomes something you actually enjoy and can do more over mm-hmm. time. So do you feel mindfulness does become more established, say, if you go on a meditation week somewhere and is it easier then to establish it? Yeah, I think... Rather than in a town, say, or... <laughs> yeah, I think, I think having that space, it, it shows you um, what the possi- like how far you can go, what mm. the possibilities are for mindfulness. Because it's obviously not going to be so easy to have it when you're um, in your normal life and you shouldn't necessarily expect that but um, when you're on the meditation week it, it shows you what how nice it can be and mm. why it's worth working towards it um, in normal life. So how would you explain just a basic mindfulness exercise? What would you do for a basic mindfulness exercise if you're walking in the woods? Um, I think uh, I'd start with uh, the breath. The breath is the... Um, somehow the uh, core because you um, come back to it and um, yeah so I would I would pay attention to my breathing and um, just be aware of it like not put all your attention on it but just to be aware of it and uh, allow that to take up the space that maybe thinking would have taken up like Mm this kind of proliferating discursive thinking Mm. Um, and when that happens your mind is more open to to taking in what's around you Mm. Mm. so so what when it feels nice it's because you're not really pushing it because you're just breathing and then you're naturally like you've got more space to experience what's going on around you Mm. and then the trick is just to, to keep it going because then you can easily sort of lose mindfulness again because you you're like wow that I'd never noticed how nice that plant is or like something and then you sort of start thinking thinking again which is fine (laughs) um but yeah to keep it going you just um keep going back to the breath and um and actually you find that that it's very like it's it can be more pleasant than like uh than being than thinking a lot 
um, about how nice it is around you, it can be more pleasant to just be experiencing it. Mm. So that's mm. sort of yeah, in the mm. in the on a walk, that's how it, it's, it goes when it's nice. <laughs> Mm. Oh, so mindfulness and calm are proving interesting all this week then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Sitting here by the Cascades at Green Street in Wales, it's very easy to remember a practice that Bhuman Punyatira brought to us from Thailand. And it was for his 80th birthday. He said it was a practice you can do at any time. And it's certainly easy to remember it here. On the in-breath, you breathe in loving kindness for yourself. On the out-breath, you breathe it out for other beings. And you can do this at any time, when you're walking, after a meditation, before a meditation. It's the kind of practice that you can do at any time. Bhuman often talks about the meditation object as being like a friend. I've been thinking about that a lot this week and how the breath is really our friend. It's watched us from the moment we were born and it's been there all the time for us when we need it. So while I often think of watching the breath, controlling the breath perhaps, or uh, trying even to find the breath, we can rest assured that most of the time the breath is there for us. And we are very lucky in a way to experience that. In some uh, Siamese manuscripts they talk about paying homage to the majesty of the breath. And you can understand that really if you think about the breath as something that's always there for us and always giving us an opportunity to practice mindfulness as well as keeping us alive. So I've been trying to do this blessings practice and I've been discussing with other people how they do it too. Everybody seems to do it in their own way and perhaps differently. Some people breathe in and go, may I be well and happy on the in-breath. May all be well and happy on the out-breath. Some people like to just breathe in loving kindness generally and breathe it out generally without differentiating between themselves and others. And some people like to take the syllable meh on the in-breath and ta on the out-breath to make metta, loving kindness. And some people just like a sense of general well-being coming in with the breath and a sense of general well-being going out with the out-breath. So I think there are many variations of this practice. But it seems to me they're all ways of blessing oneself and in a way blessing other beings. So I think that Bhuman is right to call it the blessings practice. He isn't here this year, but we hope he will be another year. And until then, perhaps we can try practicing this practice. It's certainly very helpful here. And of course, it's a very good practice to do in daily life too.